Okay, I want to talk to you about how to be a project maintainer on Solar One Health staff. And we don't need to be confused about project management and project maintainment. Usually project management is task, meeting, discussion. Instead, project maintainment means that you are also the leader and the reference for anything will happen to the project. So it's a, a more important role that will lead to the future of your project itself. And it is very important, specifically in open source. I have a little bit of experience on this stuff, working on projects from others and taking the lead as maintainer, starting from CMS, in Mozilla during the years, in WordPress, and in both for the Italian international community project used by a lot of people. But I have also experience also my personal project used by hundreds of users, where I got co-maintainer with me or contributor that helped me to moving on the project. Like in this case, tools, browser extensions, the templates for development, and many others in the years that now are abandoned or obsolete. So I was wondering, how can I explain about it using only uh, GIFs from the TBC via Silicon Valley about this topic? Because I think that this TBC is very important to explain what it means to be a project maintainer, but that's for management, in a TV series that usually the TV world is not really aligned with the reality TV world. So let's start talking about improved documentation based on your experience, because it is one of the first activities that I love to do. Because when I join a project, probably I saw something that is not clear and they can improve the documentation. So it's something that can help others to do and ask to others, new one, to join the project only improve the documentation, maybe the revenue. Be open to activities for other users, because uh, as maintainer, you need to involve new people inside your projects and you need to find new ideas to get them involved and create tasks that you can delegate to others that you don't have time to follow because you need to work on more important things. You need to propose and try new approaches because it's very important for a project that's changed people that is leading also to be aligned with the technologies and what has happened in the world. So you need to be always open to find new ways to keep working on your project. You need also to care of what people say because your project is a brand. You have users, community, people that are talking about or using their work. So you need to be care of what people think of your project. This is very important, but often people don't care in the open source world. And also you need to be honest with others because honest is different from transparency because transparency, everyone can be transparent, but, but honest is very different. It is very important because people from a leader don't want transparency. Well, to be honest about what they told us. You need also to prioritize tasks. This seems stupid, but it's very important because when you have a lot of things, a roadmap, a community, people that push stuff, you need to, you need to be say, now we have to do this. I don't care from the other stuff. But at the same time, you need to assign tasks wisely because happen often, as an example with Oktoberfest, that people say, oh, assign to me this task, I will do it. But at the end, you don't do it that. So you need to be sure that the people will do the task, will do it. So usually I do say, okay, do the per request, later I will assign to you. So in that way I shift the responsibility of the task to someone else. And not on me that they have to say, okay, this one will do it, but they have no idea when, but they have to release the project. Ah, so this usually is me, slow down, who push stuff. I usually do a lot of things, I want to move on, waiting for reviews, so ping a lot of people. The problem is that people are busy, like me. So you need to be sure that what is your plan, because you prioritize your task. So you need to be sure what you have to do. And not to get, uh, get the city from others, because you need to hurry for the release of the new project. You need that, so quite moments for review, because when you review something, you don't know, be approving something that will, you maintain. You will take the responsibility, so you cannot be like, okay, I will do it, it's fine. No, you need to be sure that everything is working as intended. You also need to remove stuff not used anymore. I'm not talking about legacy stuff, because legacy stuff is important. The point is that this stuff is not so much used, maybe I can move it to another project, so I can focus on other stuff that need more my attention. So it's very important always to check the status of all the parts of the project. You need also to check if everything works also before they're confirmed, because you can say, oh, in the far right, I say, oh, no, no, I tested, it's working, it's changing my life. No, I don't care. I need trust only through sources of, of truth, automated tools and me, because I will leave everything. 
can even be a problem, it might go. And join with the rest of the team because it's a project. There is a community. You cannot say, I did it. No, we did it. You need to say what the, the people did stuff because gratification is one of the most things powerful in the open source community. And you need to be remembered that. You need that to enjoy what others do with your stuff. Maybe something that was thinking, something new, something strange. Maybe you can find new ways to evolve the project, new process, and a lot of things that you wasn't thinking because you're using on your own, so you are implementing what you need. But looking what others do with the project is what is very amazing. And a last option, when everything is not working in a project, is if the project is closed, abandoned, or is legacy, fork, so start from scratch in a new way without thinking about it of the past, in a way that you can approach every problem that you will find. And now it's question time. <laughs> Um, one for content, um, working a lot with uh, folks coming into an on source project was all super relevant and wonderful. Um, I think almost all of my feedback is about GIFs, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. um, which is, uh, I guess, like what I want to start with is by saying, uh, is by asking like what you are looking to add with them. Because uh, I think whenever you're um, giving a talk or you're on stage, there's the information you're trying to present, which is competing with attention from you, which is competing with attention to the gifts, and with the gifts in particular, uh, you've got popular culture references that not everyone may get, um, and they may be trying to figure out, and then they're moving behind you as you present the point. Um, so I think you uh, potentially detracting some of the information uh, by having a gift on every slide. Um, and there are definitely some where you could have more information about what you're talking about on the slide rather than the gift. So I think um, when you decide, when you make the conscious choice to have a gift on every single slide, you then get yourself into a trap where when you don't have a good gift for that point you're trying to make, like one of the early ones, the text, uh, one of the ones with, um, I can't his name, uh, the text on the slide fit perfect on the gift fit perfectly what you were saying, and then slide fit, uh, slide 13, uh, the text stuff out, which is the serial bowl, and it was like, I can see you not been able to find a gift for that one, but you had to find something anyway. Um, so I think if you like gifts are probably not a choice for making your presentation pop. Like choose them selectively and work out where they add something and use them, and where they don't necessarily add something to the point you're trying to present. Don't be afraid to do something else with your presentation. Uh, but from that, the content was yeah. The case that is because I like talk that I already did. It yeah. was an hacking camp, so yeah. the part, the audience was completely different. Right. So the gift was fine because they was following me because yeah. uh, after I got the time twelve minutes instead of seven, so I can right. talk more and explain better a lot of things. So for us, because that moment was in the night, yeah. so I think it was 11 p.m. It's so, like different, yeah. yeah, so in that way, it was more relaxing for them to follow something that is easy, but can be boring for people. Right. So I chose this approach because it's more relaxing, and it's more working because the audience was open to people that are open to this kind right, of thing. Right, right, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and one final thing I did to get, um, how would you like to back here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gesturing, uh, You're totally loud enough in, in this room, in a bigger room. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> uh, so I thought you did uh, several things very well, uh, especially at the beginning of your presentation when you're kind of, uh, you introduce the topic and you frame it uh, by letting the audience know about your experience with that topic. I thought you did that very well. You would say, here's what I'm going to talk about. And uh, here's why, you know, here's my experience. These are the projects I've worked on, such and such number of projects. Here's some that are listed uh, on the slide. Uh, you did that very well in terms of framing yourself as someone who's knowledgeable and experienced in this area. Um, also, your tone, uh, your inflection, and where you emphasize certain words. You do an excellent job of, uh, you know, it needs to be clear, it needs to be powerful, and you do it better than I just did right there. Um, but that's something that you did exceptionally well throughout, and you had a very clear narrative. Um, I agree with Joe that uh, in terms of the gifts, there was a clear theme to them. Obviously, they're all Silicon Valley. And that's a show that I'm familiar with, but not everyone may be. Um, in terms of the amount of real estate that the GIFs take up on the slide, uh, there were a few where the GIF actually dominated the actual text that you had. So I found myself paying more of my mind share to the actual image rather than the text that was above it. And I think that detracted from the message you were trying to convey. And there was one or two moments where I was watching you. And uh, as we all know, sometimes GIFs can repeat, you know, they loop 
Uh, sometimes that's smooth, and sometimes it's jerky when they go back to the uh, beginning. There were a few moments where there was a gif in my uh, peripheral as I was watching you, and um, I kept finding my eyes kept, as that gif would loop, I kept jerking my eyes back to the slide because it was looping back to the beginning, and that little tick kind of distracted my attention a little bit. So um, overall, great, but uh, I do think that uh, the amount of real estate that the gifts took up kind of tended to cause my eyes to jerk a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so plus, plus one, plus 11 to, to what Joe and Michael were saying. Um, I, I do want to say again that I think that there's really um, useful and uh, informative content. And I haven't heard, a, like, I haven't heard that particular talk, like this particular topic framed the way you did what maintainers should be aware of. And so I think, I think this talk has legs to go a lot of places. Um, in, I'm glad you gave us some context about where you first presented it, because for you, I think that the, the Silicon Valley theme works really well for your audience. One thing, and for the audience you described, one thing I noticed is um, like I didn't see a single woman in any of the gifts, and that sort of got to me. Um, and then also, uh, yeah, boring typos and language stuff. But but I know you usually talk in Italian. I would say that if you wanted to talk in English, that this would be a really good talk to to take and try to 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 do that with. So uh, thank you. Well done. Yeah, thank you as well. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I want to point out uh, my favorite point you made was that it's important to celebrate with a team. That's always really important to remember. Um, everything about gifts and how it's competing with your presence, which otherwise was really on point, has been said. Uh, however, I also noticed that um, it's only guys represented in the visuals. Um, and especially talking about the open source community, I think that's a known issue. Um, so I would really suggest maybe picking a different team, a theme um, other than Silicon Valley. Again, not everyone might be familiar with the show and then the, the joke is kind of lost on part of the audience who doesn't know. Um, other than that, I actually disagree a little bit with the gifts being too distracting. For me, the rhythm worked quite well. Um, I thought, yeah, it's complementing what you're saying in like a lightly entertaining way, so that's good. Um, and also, I really liked that you had this uh, strong theme and was very consistent, uh, except the, the first two or three slides had like a very different style and almost seemed a bit corporate, like lots of texts and this oh, yeah. uh, uh, illustration. Mm -hmm. So if you have a strong theme like this, make it consistent on all the slides and then mm -hmm. that's really nice. Thank you.